Hi, and welcome to this video, how do I create Transputer and Transitter in Microsoft Dynamics NAV 2013 R2. My name is Klaus Lundström, MVP for Microsoft Dynamics NAV. This video was made in collaboration with Platan and Microsoft. At the end of this video, we will have seen how I modified Report 108, the Custom Order Detail Report, to include Transputter and Transheader for the Order Group, the Customer Group, and for all customers in the report, giving the user the possibility to choose how transfooter and transheader should appear on the report. If you are unfamiliar with the terms transfooter and transheader, these are the terms used in Microsoft Dynamics NAV Classic reports, giving us the possibility to show running total at the end of each page and carry this value to the top of the next page. Let me show you. The first thing you will see that I have modified on this report is adding this menu continue on next page by and then the user has the possibility to select order, customer and all customers. When the user has selected continue by order, the value of the transfer is based on the order that's continuing on the next page. And if we go to the next page, the trans header is based on the order that did not complete on the previous page. If the user has selected continue by customer, the value of the transfer is based on the customer that's continuing on the next page. And if we go to the next page, the trans header is based on the customer that did not complete on the previous page. And at last, if the user has selected continue by all customers, the value of the transfer is based on all customers in the report. So transfer is now showing running total for all customers and orders on the page. And if we go to the next page, the trans header displays the overall running total. Objective of this video is simple. We need to create the values used in the transfooter and transitter. We need to store the values in the variables and we need to show the values in the page footer and the page header of the report. For creating the values, we need the running value for the order, customer and all customers in the report. And we need to know when the order group and the customer groups are done. In total, we need five new columns in the report to accomplish this. For storing the values, we need to store the running value for the order, the customer and all customers, so we can use them in the page footer and the page header. And we need to store the values when the order group and the customer groups are done, so we know when to show the values in the page footer and the page header. To accomplish this, we need to create custom code to store the values. For showing the values, we need to create five text boxes in page footer to set the values. We will call them order totals, customer code totals, totals per page, an order group done and customer group done. And finally, the most important part, we will create the transfer text box in the page footer and the transheader text box in the page header. In both these text boxes, we will create a switch which changes values depending on the option chosen by the user in the request page. In step number one, we're going to add five new columns to the report. We need the running value for the order group, the running value for the customer group and the running value for the overall report. And we need to know when the order group is done and we need to know when the customer group is done. So we need to add five new columns. Let's go to Visual Studio and add these five columns. In Visual Studio, I've added the five new columns to the main tablets. I've made the columns real small since they will not show any values here in the body of the report. The values will only be created here. Also, the five columns are hidden so they will not be visible at all when running the report. Let us expand the columns so it's easier for us to look into each of the expressions. I have now expanded the five columns, and as you can see, I have an expression in each of these columns in a detailed row of the tablix. In the first expression, I have the running value of the order. So if we look at the expression, I have the running value of the sales order amount on the order group. If we look at the other one here, I have the expression. I have the running value of the sales order amount now on the customer group. And the last running value here is the running value of the sales order amount of the old data set. Then I would like to know when the group is done. So I'll go into this expression here and say when the order group is done. So row number order group is equal to the count rows of order group. Well, then when that uh, is the same, well, then uh, I have reached the, uh, the, the end of the, of the group. And the customer group done is the same. So. I go here and look if the uh, the row number for the customer group when that's uh, the same as the count rows of customer group. Well, I know I have reached the uh, the last row of my uh, my group. 
With the five colors created, we are now ready to proceed to step number two, where we'll create custom code to store the values, so we can use them in the page setter and page footer. I will create custom code to store order total, customer total, report total. These three are based on the first three columns with running values, which we created in step number one. Then I will create custom code to store the order show header, the customer show header. These are based on the last columns, which contain information if the group was completed or not. And at last, which is not required, I have created custom code to store the values of the sales header number and the customer number, so I can show them in the trans footer and the trans header text boxes. And then I have added the text with the custom pet right function. To see the values of the custom code in Visual Studio, we need to go to Report Properties, and we have to go to Code, and in here I have all my custom code. It's quite hard to read here, uh, so what I've done is I've copied all this over into Word, and then over in Word I'll explain all the, uh, all the custom code that I've done. We are now in Word, and if we examine the first three, Order Total, Customer Total, and Report Total, you can see that I have the possibility to store a value by setting the value, and when I need the value, I retrieve the value by getting the value. This is the same pattern, but when we use order header and custom header. Then I have the custom pad right, and my sales header no and customer no. The last two I really do not need if we could add more than one report items in a text box, in a page footer and page header. But this, since this is not supported in Visual Studio, I will need to have these values. So we're now at step number three. We now have the values which we need. We created this in step number one. We have the necessary custom code required. We created this in step number two. So now it's time for us to use all this. We will create seven fields in the page footer where we will set the value on the current page. If you're not familiar with the RDLC reports, it is important to understand the rendering order of the report. When the report is being rendered, first the body of the report is rendered, then the page header, then the page footer. So our reports could easily be more than one page, but when the body is rendering, it unfortunately has no idea of which page number it's on and it cannot refer to the page header or page footer since these has not been rendered yet. This is the reason that we cannot use page number in the body of our report, but we can use report items from the page header and the page footer to extract the information we need on the current page, since the page header and page footer is rendered after the body have been rendered. In the following code, you will see me use report items all the time, since it's a very efficient way of getting information from the current page. So we are now back in Visual Studio, so let us see the seven fields which I have created in the page footer. If we open one of them, notice that I have placed the expression on the visibility expression of the text box. The reason for this is that I do not want to show the values in each of these seven fields, but only setting the values so I can use them in the trans footer and trans header text boxes. Let's have a look in Word on all the expressions for each of these fields. We're now looking at all the seven expressions in Word. Notice the if statement in all the expressions is only there because I want to have the text box visible in the page footer. Since when hiding a text box in a page footer or page header, Visual Studio has a nice feature where it moves elements around in the header and footer. I like to be in control of what is moved around, so by adding the if statement and return false all the time, I'm sure that I do not run into this little nice Visual Studio feature. So the real code here is found inside the if statement. In example, set show header order. Depending on the value of the order group that done text box in the body of the report, we will either store true or false in this variable. True if the order is completed on the current page, or false if the order is not completed on the current page. Remember, we did this check by comparing the row number of the group with the count rows of the group. When the value is false, we know that we must show the trans footer on the current page and the trans header on the next page. It's now final time to look at the trans footer and trans header text boxes in the page header and the page footer. Let's have a look at the, uh, the expression first for the visibility expression for the trans footer. You can see it right in here in the text box properties and in the visibility. I have set an expression where it says global's overall page number equals global's overall, overall total pages. And if these two are the same, well, then we have reached the last page of the report, and then the uh, transporter should not be shown at all. And if we go to the expression of the, the visibility expression of the text box property for the trans header, go to visibility, and if this says uh, global's overall page number equals one. So uh, if this is true, well then we're on the first page and it doesn't make sense to have any trans headers on the first page. 
Now let us look at the transferer and transitter expressions. Even though the text only says transitor here and transferer here, the expressions are quite large. I will copy the expression to Notepad for us to examine. We're now in Notepad, looking at the expression found in the transfooter and transheader expressions. Notice that these two expressions are the same, so I'll only focus on one of them. First, we have a switch with three cases. The first one will show if get show header is true and if the transfooter number is zero. I really haven't talked about the transfooter number, but this is the option on the request page where the user decides if this report should continue by order, customer, or all customers. Order will be zero, customer will be one, and all customers will be two. This way I know which choice the user have taken. If we examine the code, and if get show header is true, and transfooter no is zero, we can see that I show four elements in the transfooter text box. Continue caption, a simple label. Order number caption, again a simple label. Get sales header no, the actual order number. Get total order, the actual amount of the running value on the current page. Notice that since this text, text contains a quite a few elements, I, not can place, I cannot place the format of the value on the format property of the transfer text box. This will not work, so I need to, to be explicit on the actual value of the expression. So that's why I have the format specified on the get total order. If the end user selects the customers on the request page and the customer orders are not completed on the current page, the second case will be true. And at last, if the end user has selected all customers on the request page, the third case will be true, and transfer will be shown on all pages except the last, and trans header will be shown on all pages except the first page. To summarize, you saw how I've added the five columns in the body of the report. These were the actual values which we needed. Then you saw how I created the custom code, so it was possible for us to store the values in the page footer. And then you saw how I added the seven fields in the page footer. And at last we examined the trans footer and the trans header expressions, where we saw what would print on the report based on the selection by the user, and if the order of the custom orders had been completed. I hope you enjoyed this How Do I video. I'm Klaus Lundström, MVP for Microsoft Dynamics NV.